We'll begin Mass this evening with hymn number 910-910 from the hymn book. Can I invite you please to stand? Christ be beside me, Christ be before me, Christ be above me, King of my heart. Christ be behind me, Christ be below me, Christ be above me, never to part. Christ on my right hand, Christ on my left hand, Christ all around me, shield in the strife. Christ in my sleeping, Christ in my sitting, Christ in my rising, light of my life. Christ be in all hearts, thinking about me. Christ be in all tongues, telling of me. Christ be the vision, in eyes that see me, in ears that hear me, Christ ever be. Good evening. Welcome to our celebration of Mass. It's the fifth Sunday of Lent. Welcome also if you join us online. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We are listening again this week, like last, to some serious theology from the Gospel of St. John, but always looking forward the events that we'll celebrate over the next few weeks as we celebrate Holy Week and the Easter Triduum. Um, It's an invitation, I think, to reflect on the struggles that we have, but to recognise they were also part of the life of the Lord. And and so we give thanks for solidarity and, of course, for the forgiveness that we can uh, depend on that arises out of that. So with confidence we gather, we acknowledge our sinfulness, we ask God's pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your help, we ask you, Lord our God, that we may walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for our world, your Son handed himself over for our salvation. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. See, the days are coming. It is the Lord who speaks. When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, but not a covenant like the one I made with their ancestors on the day I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant of mine, so I had to show them who was master. It is the Lord who speaks. No, 
This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel when those days arrive. It is the Lord who speaks. Deep within them, I will plant my law, writing it on their hearts. Then I will be their God, and they shall be my people. There will be no further need for neighbor to try to teach neighbor, or brother to say to brother, learn to know the Lord. No, they will all know me, the least no less than the greatest. It is the Lord who speaks. Since I will forgive their iniquity and never call their sin to mind. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm, a pure heart create for me, O God. A pure pure heart heart create create for me, O God. God. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. In your compassion blot out my offence. O wash me more and more from my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. A pure pure heart heart create for me, O God. A pure heart create for me, O God. Put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. A pure pure heart heart create for me, O God. Give me again the joy of your help, with a spirit of fervour sustain me, that I may teach transgressors your ways, and sinners may return to you. A pure pure heart heart create for me, O God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. During his life on earth, Christ offered up prayer and entreaty, aloud and in silent tears, to the one who had the power to save him out of death, and he submitted so humbly that his prayer was heard. Although he was son, he learnt to obey through suffering, but having been made perfect, he became for all who obey him the source of eternal salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Gospel. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. If a man serves me, says the Lord, he must follow me wherever I am. My servant will be there too. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. These approached Philip, who came from Bethsaida in Galilee, and put this request to him. Sir, we should like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew, and Andrew and Philip went together to tell Jesus. And Jesus replied to them, Now the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you most solemnly, Unless a grain of wheat falls on the ground and dies, it remains only a single grain. But if it dies, it yields a rich harvest. For anyone who loves his life loses it, and anyone who hates his life in this world will keep it for life eternal. If a man serves me, he must follow me. Wherever I am, my servant will be there too. If anyone serves me, my father will honour him. And now my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father... Save me from this hour. But it was for this very reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. A voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. People standing by who heard this said it was a clap of thunder. Others said an angel was speaking to him. But Jesus answered, It was not for my sake that this voice came, but for yours. Now sentence is being passed in this world. Now the prince of this world is to be overthrown. When I am lifted up from the earth, I shall draw all people to myself. By these words, he indicated the kind of death he would die.
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It was uh, the early Greek philosopher Aristotle who, um, in contemplating the literature, the writing that he was familiar with, uh, came up with the idea that there are only really four or five plots possible for any narrative, um, something like recognition or discovery. Um, one, of the, one of the ones that's dominant is, is quest, the, the search for something. And if you, if you think about the great narratives that we know um, or even from the Gospels, um, the, the, the Good Samaritan is about a quest. It's about a quest for justice, or the prodigal son is a quest for stability uh, in, in family. Uh, and if you think about the, the films, the movies, and the television programs that are popular, a lot of them are about quests, they're about a journey of seeking, and sometimes finding, but it's the, it's the journey um, and it's the notion of quest that, that gives the, the suspense. I'm thinking about NCIS and I'm thinking about well, the Traitors was the, was the popular one recently. That's a, that's a real quest because um, there's a lot going on about a lot of searching and, and that's what makes the drama, that's what makes the narrative. And the Gospels, um, well, the Gospels are like that. The, the television programs and the movies keep them safe. The, there are people questing for, looking for things outside of themselves. The Gospels are, are about people, disciples, normally, looking for things inside themselves. Um, so we're reading Mark's Gospel in the ordinary seasons, ordinary time, Sundays this year. Um, that's about the discovery of who is Jesus. It's about the disciples learning who Jesus is so that they can have a relationship to God through him that is appropriate to, to the kind of person he is, the kind of demands he makes of discipleship, um, and, and the kind of life that they, they're called to live. John's Gospel, it takes that to another level. There's quite a lot of quests here, but Jesus discovering what his mission is too. Um, there's a wee bit of that in Matthew, Mark and Luke, but maybe only one passage that really goes there, if you like, with the, with the Lord's quest for who he is and what's he to do. That's the Garden of Gethsemane. John's Gospel doesn't have an agony in the garden, but he has this that we've just heard which is a wee bit about Jesus' quest for who he is and what his mission is, the great quest, of course. And that's a quest for, for us all. How will we live our lives of discipleship? How will we be who we're called to be? That's a quest. It's, it's a narrative. It's the narrative of our lives. It's supposed to be exciting, but it's, it's always going to be challenging. And Jesus' conclusion is that it's only by giving up that we can take on. And that, that's like a tall, that sounds like an awful tall order, it sounds like an awful complicated thing. But if, if, if you think about the stages of your life, what you've given up in order to have what you have, and, and how we're challenged maybe to let go of some of that as well. Um, it's only when we leave childish ways behind, become an adult, and we can only, we can't, the two can't coexist in our lives. We have to move from one to the other, and then we go from being someone who's perhaps very free, very open, very able. We, we gradually take on commitments to one another, to significant people in our lives, um, a, a spouse perhaps, um, and that commitment might lead to children, and we're committed to them too. So at every stage, we're letting some things go and taking on new things. Now, obviously, the, the, the gospel has a, if you like, has a theological way of, of coining that, because it, there's no easy answers to that. So it talks about dying to self and rising to something new. And it, of course, the, the cross casts its shadow in all our lives. So we've all had to leave something behind. We've all had to let something in our lives die um, in order to live the choices that we wanted to live. So that, that it's, it, it, to, to put that theological language, that dying in order to live, um, makes it sound terribly complex and difficult, but we know, we know this. We know we let certain things go in our lives at certain stages in our lives in order to possess something that we feel is better or more appropriate or more useful or, 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 or more beneficial for the situations in which we find ourselves. Um, and of course, isn't that what we do in Lent? We, we, we let things go. Uh, when we're children, we give up things. When we're adults, we recognize that 
abstinence, self-denial, um, not sating all our appetites immediately, um, is a good thing for our nobility of spirit, a good thing for our resolve, um, a good thing for, for helping us grow from being children who demand instant gratification to being adults who are prepared to provide for others. So it becomes less of it taking and more of it giving. Um, and, and that involves a, a denial of self, if you like. And that's the whole narrative of the quest of Lent, isn't it? Because what we're letting go in Lent is so that we can take on something new. We, 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 we proverbially die to live again because at Easter we will celebrate our new birth in Christ, our baptism. We reborn as the family of God. So in order to be reborn, we let certain things die. So we let go of things that, that prevent us living our baptism to, to, to the best possible extent. Um, so the, the challenge I think for us is what do we let go in order to, to, to find what we're looking for in our quest. Now, movies and television programs will not do that because it's too complex and it's too difficult and it's too challenging. People don't necessarily want that because, well, it's entertainment. So they want to be entertained. They don't want to be challenged particularly or they don't want to have to learn life's difficult things. But the Gospels are not entertainment. Um, the Gospels are about challenge and about learning new things about ourselves uh, and about recognizing you know, how we live the death and the resurrection of the Lord, how the cross casts its shadow in our lives so that we can embrace the resurrection. So what do we let go of so that we can possess that which is better? Um, and, you know, John's Gospel is really, really good for that, really, really challenging. When it ends with that, with a, with a wee play there, because he says, when I am raised up, I shall draw men to myself. And by this he indicated the kind of death he would die. Um, when I read raised up, in Mark's Gospel or Matthew's Gospel or Luke's Gospel, I'm thinking of resurrection. When I hear raised up in John's Gospel, I'm thinking about crucifixion. So, when Jesus says, I'll be raised up from the earth, John reminds us that he's indicating the kind of death he will die. And that's what draws all people to him, his example of giving up in order to possess. So, our Lent, we've, we've, we've tried to embark upon prayer, fasting um, and almsgiving, giving of ourselves so that we can live a little better our call to be members of the family of God. That these last days of Lent, fifth week, holy week, might empower us to do that, might help us recognize the power of that um, and the reward of, of, of leaving behind in order to take up something new for each other, for ourselves, we pray this evening. To pray for our needs, we stand. Grant to your servant church the zeal to bring all people to Christ and to make known his saving sacrifice of himself. Give her power to drive out evil and to find her life in his death and resurrection. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Bless all who work to spread the gospel and offer their lives in its service. Guide the seekers after truth and lead into the right way those who care only for the pleasures of this world and the satisfaction of their own lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Make us willing servants of the faith, helping those around us to find their way and be renewed in the power of Christ. By the power of the cross, may all divisions in our community be mended and all hearts healed. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Have mercy on all who suffer in body, mind or spirit. May they hear the divine voice of power and comfort, be relieved from their affliction and find new life after loss. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who have died to this world. May they grow into the life of heaven where joy is endless and what has been offered on earth comes to perfect fruition. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. To these our general intercessions, we add prayer for our own particular and local needs. We remember those who have asked us to pray for them, especially those whom we know to be in particular need. Pray for those who join us online, particularly if they are unwell or are caring for others. Lord, oh, encourage them and bless and reward them for generosity of heart. Pray for ourselves and for each other that we may recognize the presence of the cross in the lives of us all, be supportive of one another in our times of challenge, and recognize that to possess something new, we need to allow something old to die in us, after the example of the Lord Jesus. And we pray finally for our dead. We remember those who have died recently, particularly Eileen Hick and Margaret Burns. And for those whose anniversaries occur about now, also we pray, remembering particularly those who have asked us to remember them in prayer. That they may all know the presence of God. Lord, hear us. God our Father, you call us to your family. You sustain us as we respond to that call. Give us courage and strength, we pray, each day, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let's pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all, his holy church. Hear us, Lord Almighty, and having instilled in us, your servant, the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify us by the workings of this sacrifice. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. For by your grace and by your gracious gifts, each year your faithful people await the sacred Easter feasts with the joy of minds made pure so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, 
and participating in the mysteries by which we have been reborn, we may be led to the fullness of grace which you bestow upon your sons and daughters. And so, with the angels, the thrones, the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as together with all the saints, without end, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember our brothers and sisters fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph our spouse, the Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to life eternal, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. For the coming of God's kingdom, we pray as the Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that 
Sahayam God, he still can know that I am God. I am the Lord that he healeth That he healeth thee, I am the Lord that healeth me. In me, O Lord, I put my trust. In me, O Lord, I put my trust. In me, O Lord. I put my trust. Let's stand and pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of the body in Christ, in whose body and blood we hear hath communion. He who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Can I invite you to familiarise familiarise yourself with the latest notices? They're all in the usual places. There's also a little flyer with uh, masses of times and services for Holy Week. Uh, And this coming week is part of a preparation together uh, for Easter. There's confessions all day in St. Mirren's Cathedral from half past eight in the morning till half past seven in the evening with a number of priests on at each uh, slot. So there should be uh, plenty of provision for the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Uh, also, we prayed for two members of our parish community who have died recently, Eileen Hick, her funeral will be in St. Mernes Cathedral on Wednesday, and Margaret Burns, her funeral here uh, on Friday, uh, both at 10 o'clock. Thank you for your presence. Thank you if you joined us online. I hope you have a, a nice evening, a, and a, good, a nice weekend, and a good week ahead. We ask God's blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Virgin, by God's decree, you were called eternally that he could give his son to our race. Mary, we praise you, hail full of grace. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. By your faith and loving accord, as the handmaid of the Lord, you undertook God's plan to embrace. Mary, we thank you, hail full of grace. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Glory to God, you gave and expressed. Of all women, the 
one so blessed when in mankind your Son took his place. Mary, we thank you, hail full of grace. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria.